we mentioned that uh, computers are deterministic systems. So the random number generators that we can construct actually pseudo random number generators. Uh, we shorten them as PRNG. A PRNG is a deterministic algorithm that produces a sequence of random looking numbers using a seed value. So uh, PRNGs have an internal state. So after generating a long sequence of numbers, all variations in internal state will be exhausted and the sequence of numbers will repeat an earlier sequence, which we call periodicity. So we also talk about this in the, when we are talking about stream ciphers. So uh, since the random numbers have an internal state, uh, which is finite, then there can be finite many variations of this internal state. So depending on the internal state, this random number generator will produce a number, but after some point on, you will uh, use every possible internal state. For instance, if your internal state is 20 bits, you can uh, at most produce two to the 20 uh, different outputs because your, your internal state will repeat itself after some point. So if you think about it as a linear feedback shift register, of course. So this means that after that many uh, numbers are produced, it will go back to beginning and produce the same thing again, so which will be called periodicity. So a small periodicity uh, will give the attacker a lot of information and they can uh, guess which number that you are going to produce. But periodicity can be very large so that it would look virtually infinite. So if your periodicity is, for instance, two to the 200, which means that after you produce two to the 200 different numbers, you will produce the, you will go back to beginning and produce the same sequence again. Uh, this is virtually infinite because we don't have the computational power or the time to produce two to the 200 uh, random numbers anyway. So this is why we can use these systems, but again, the periodicity should be really huge. Same seed provides the same outputs. This is a bad thing and a good thing. The bad thing is that uh, since the same seed pro always produce the same output, when an attacker can capture the seed value, they also captures everything that you're going to produce at, after that point on. So it means like uh, uh, if they capture the initial seed, this means that they know all of the numbers you have produced and going to produce. But if they capture the internal state, they, ha they have the knowledge of all of the numbers that you're going to produce after that point. So, but uh, having the same seed producing the same output is a good thing because uh, in most of the experiments we do in cryptography, but also in computer science, we perform experiments which depends on the data that is randomly produced. So uh, if the same seed value produces the same random numbers, this way, your experiments becomes reproducible, which is very important in science. And unfortunately, there are many, many examples in literature uh, which are detected, that, but most of them are not detected yet, that a lot of experiments uh, are wrong, actually. They are fabricated or uh, the scientists use fake data or data that doesn't even exist, but they just fabricated it or uh, they modified the known uh, real data. So since we cannot reproduce this kind of experiments again, uh, we cannot trust them. So this is one of the important things. For this reason, in all of our experiments, uh, most of the time we uh, give the seed value or the data we use for the experiment to show that the uh, the academic study was correct and uh, you can reproduce the data and re perform the experiment to obtain the same results. This is really important. One way of uh, producing uh, random numbers, for instance, in a very fast way, uh, which is reproducible, is just using a block cipher, for instance, AES. So take AES, choose a secret key, then choose a counter, let's say for, you start from zero, and encrypting these counters with the secret key you have will give uh, ciphertext blocks, which looks really uh, random because AES is, uh, uh, has a good, has a good confusion and diffusion layer. So the outputs look random. So if you need 
a lot of random numbers in a very fast way. You can use a yes block cipher and obtain all of this uh, randomly looking numbers. And whenever uh, somebody this, uh, wants to per, uh, reproduce the results of your experiment, you can simply say the uh, secret key value and the counter that you used in your experiment so that they can produce the same random numbers again. So uh, this is a good thing, but this is also a uh, bad thing in terms of uh, security. For instance, the method I mentioned is a good thing for experiments and reproducibility, but it is also a bad thing for, uh, I mean, people can use it to put backdoors in the in random number generators. For instance, assume that you bought a device as a random number generator, you press this button and it produces some random numbers and they really look random. You perform a lot of statistical tasks, you check randomness and you see that, okay, they, uh, and say that, okay, they, they are really random. So you might be convinced that the device you have uh, is giving you random numbers, but Maybe inside it, there is an AES block cipher and a secret key, which is known by the manufacturer, so that any number that you are going to produce is already known by the manufacturer. Uh, so it is a very good way of putting a backdoor in a random number generator, which wouldn't be detected by the, any statistical measures, statistical randomness tests, and so on. So we will go back to this topic probably many times during this lecture. So, uh, which I already mentioned, but if the attacker captures or guesses the seed or the internal state, then the security is lost. You no longer have uh, forward security, so this is called forward prediction, but uh, if the algorithm is reversible, this is also, you also lose uh, backtracking because they can also capture from the internal state, they can go back and obtain the previous random numbers you generated. So the, these were about pseudo random number generators. Another uh, type of random number generators are called true random number generators, shortened as TRNG. To avoid deterministic nature of PRNGs, TRNGs use a physical source to generate random numbers. Since uh, we don't know how the physical source is going to behave, that is the assumption, uh, we also don't know which number these random number generators will produce. So the physical source is called an entropy source and can be physical phenomena like radioactive decay, thermal noise, shot noise, avalanche noise in Zener diodes, clock drifts, but they may be susceptible to timing attacks, timing of actual movements of a hard disk read right head, radio noise, and so on and so forth. So most of them are uh, actually uh, data that you can get from the circuit, from the hardware, and uh, all of these methods are used. Uh, but uh, they also have some problems, let's say. So let's talk about them a little bit. Due to their nature, two random number generators uh, do not provide uniformity property because since they are based on physical phenomena, you cannot guarantee that the data you will get from that physical phenomenon is uniform, right? However, a hash function can be used to overcome this issue. This is a, a common technique that is used. So you get the uh, data from this entropy source. So you have some, you produce some zeros and ones, but instead of using it as a random number, just put it uh, as an input uh, to a hash function and the output would now have the properties like uniformity. Two random number generators are not as fast as software hardware solutions most of the time. This is because you are getting the data from uh, physical uh, phenomenon and you don't know how fast that uh, data will come from that physical source. That is one of the problems because otherwise the computers are getting faster and faster. So in uh, your pseudo random number generators become faster and faster, but uh, we cannot say the same for these two random number generators. So one approach is to combine these two things and these are generally uh, referred to as cascades construction of RNGs and used in operating systems. So modern operating systems and cryptographic libraries generally take input from an entropy source to supply a buffer or pool of entropy. 
Then it is used periodically to see the cryptographically secure PRNG, which is shortened as CSPRNG, to provide random numbers. So ID is as follows. You have an entropy source like the physical uh, phenomenon as we mentioned before. Y you uh, provide, uh, so you obtain non-deterministic random numbers from this source. You put it in a pool, which, is, which can be very large, like maybe eight gigabytes or something that is stored in your hard drive. But whenever you uh, want to produce, uh, for instance, AES secret key, which is 128 bits, you, you ask your system to uh, produce random numbers from this pool. So this is taken as the non-deterministic random sys to a CSPRNG. As I said, it can be SHA-2, for instance. So you put your data to this, and this output of your hash function can be used as a random number for the purpose you need. But of course, this method, uh, this method is faster than uh, two random number generators. But since the implementation is in software, it is vulnerable to memory-based attacks, timing attacks. It also does not solve the problem of what entropy source to use. Sampling user behavior is not secure. So you might need to still get data from, for instance, hard disk read and write ahead, and so on. Let's see uh, an example in uh, in real life. Let's say these are uh, uh, these come from Intel's digital number generator DRNG. So uh, we already mentioned this in our uh, uh, discussion of block ciphers, and we said that new uh, CPUs, but of course, our, I think the word new is no longer necessary here because since 2009, almost every AMD and Intel CPU comes with an hardware uh, instructions that are called AES new instructions, AES NI. So these instructions allow us to use uh, AES in the hardware level. So there's an instruction for simply one round of AES that you can directly run from the CPU. After these uh, instructions, AS, uh, sorry, Intel also uh, uh, put a, a random number generator into their CPUs. They actually use this uh, AES hardware instructions to produce random numbers. So I did as follows. They have a hardware entropy source, which I will mention in the next slide. They take a non-deterministic um, input from here, and they perform AES CBC make uh, encryption using this uh, hardware level uh, AES instructions. Then uh, they perform uh, AES CTR based encryption again. And this SP890B, which I will be talking about in the following slides and 90A, actually NIST standards for randomness and entropy. So they say that they are performing operations which actually uh, uh, matches the, let's say, the definitions or precautions of this document. So they actually produce random numbers using two AES encryptions, and each core can produce uh, these seeds from these e encryptions, and then they produce uh, any number of bytes you want from the core, and they produce these random number generate uh, these random numbers. So. For experiments, this is really a good thing. I always use this uh, DRNG in all of my experiments because I need to have uh, a lot of uh, random numbers as uh, plain text blocks in all of my experiments. And uh, you, I want to get them really fast, otherwise the experiment will take a, lot, a very long time. So having a random number generator at the hardware level is a very, very important thing. And I strongly encourage you to use it in all of your experiments when you need uh, random data. So this uh, at Intel processes, these, these uh, random number generators are actually come with this uh, property called secure key. So if you check your CPU model on the internet, I think if you, you need to go to Intel's website ARC. And when you look at the specifications of your CPU, you can check if it has secure key, which will be yes or no at the web page. So if 
it, it is yes, then this means that you can uh, uh, randomly generate, uh, sorry, you can generate random numbers using DRNG and you can actually have, can get the uh, source codes from white papers of Intel. So it is very uh, short uh, C codes that you can use in your implementations to generate random numbers which will be, again, very useful for all of the experiments that you need to perform in cryptography or in any other area of computer science. The entropy source runs asynchronously on a self-time circuit and uses thermal noise within the silicon to output a random stream of bits at the rate of 3 gigahertz. So this is the uh, entropy source of the Intel's DRNG. We said that we needed a physical source. In this case, they use the thermal noise. So, and it, it is really fast. So this way they really generate fast random number generators. Uh, and because again, it is very useful for many applications, but be careful when using for cryptographic purposes, because we cannot check if this implementation has a backdoor or not, because uh, the manufacturer produces the CPU, and uh, we cannot look inside at how it works. So we are just assuming that uh, it works like the like this. But maybe there is a secret seed value. Instead of using the terminal noise, they just use the seed value and update it uh, like a counter. So this way they can know uh, which CPU uh, the numbers the random numbers that a CPU can produce since the beginning to the end. So we don't, I mean, we don't know if there's such a backdoor or not. And the problem is uh, such a backdoor might be introduced not by Intel, but the factor that is going to produce the CPUs. So it is a very hard thing to check. So this is why me using it as the secure key as it mentioned here, might not be a good idea if you need really uh, security, let's say. So FIPS analysis standards has a lot of uh, suggestions for random numbers, like uh, elliptic curve uh, digital signature algorithms document in the appendix A.4. They mention how you can use SHA-1 or DES, uh, data encryption algorithm, to generate pseudo-random numbers. In this uh, document at the appendix, they also provide uh, how you can use DES to generate pseudo-random numbers. And in this document, they mention how you can use triple DES or AES to produce random numbers. So uh, I actually had some figures and algorithms uh, from these appendices, but now I think that they are not that important, so I removed it from the slide. So, uh, as I mentioned before, you can. Uh, it is not a hard thing to convert a block cipher to a random number generator for your personal use, but otherwise, uh, it will be. It is not that important. So I removed these uh, figures and algorithms. So any implementation of the elliptic curve digital signature algorithm requires the able to generate random or pseudo-random integers. Such numbers are, are used to derive a user's private key and the user's sperm as a secret key. These random or pseudo-randomly generated integers are selected to be between one and n, where n is a prime number. If pseudo-random numbers are desired, they shall be generated by the techniques given in this appendices and so on. So these are the uh, FIPS and ANSI standards for generating random numbers. But uh, again, I just removed this slides because I don't think that they're that important and there is no, uh, I cannot see any direct logic from why we are using those uh, block ciphers in that manner. But again, uh, if you're interested, please go and check those appendices. Uh, they're very old documents. This is why actually I didn't want to mention it. Probably, as you can see, it's one of them is from 1998. Maybe we can have uh, modern versions of these documents and then we can talk about them in the future. 